Welcome to the Spiritual Chats Podcast. I'm your host, Reed, also known as Emerald Lotus. Each week, I sit down with a unique guest to discuss various aspects of spirituality. Each guest is a master in their specific niche. Not only will they share their wisdom with us, but we'll also get a chance to know some of our favorite creators a little bit better. Whether you identify as a witch or not, we all know that October is spooky season, specifically October 31st being Halloween. But did you know that October 31st is also Samhain? It looks like it's written Samhain, but it's actually pronounced Samhain. It is an ancient festival marking the end of the harvest and the beginning of the dark half of the year. For many practicing witches, Samhain is one of the most important celebrations in the Wheel of the Year, a cycle of seasonal festivals that honor nature's rhythms. Today, we're diving deep into the magic of Samhain and the significance of the Wheel of the Year. Joining us is a special guest who will guide us through the spiritual meaning of these traditions and how they can help us connect with the cycles of nature and ourselves. So let's welcome one of my favorite content creators, Mia, also known as Ash and Rose. Welcome, Mia. Thank you so much for being here to talk all things witchy for this perfect time of year. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be a guest and I'm super excited. So can you give us all an overview of what the Witch's Wheel of the Year is? I know that all of us hear the term Wheel of the Year quite often, but I mean, what is it really and where, where does it come from? Sure. So the Wheel of the Year, as I understand it, is an annual cycle of eight seasonal festivals and solar events used by modern pagans and Wiccans. The celebrations, also known as Sabbaths, are rooted in various ancient traditions, but the placing of them into the eight segments of the Wheel of the Year is more modern. Each Sabbath represents a different stage of the annual cycle, with Yule in most traditions beginning that cycle, followed by Imbolc, Ostara, Beltane, Letha, Lunasa, Mabon, and finally Samhain. The term Wheel of the Year originates from, I think, the 20th century and is believed to be created by Gerald Gardner and Ross Nichols back in the 50s or 60s. And to sort of work alongside it, there are so many different like resonances with the Sabbaths, but mostly it is celebrating with activities or rituals and naturally becoming aligned with the times of the year and the seasons. Awesome. So we would work with it very much based on the seasons and kind of the energies that are already naturally going on during that time. Yes, definitely. Obviously, each Sabbath has its own different symbolism. And obviously, like, for example, the summer solstice, like some people go up to Stonehenge. So you can have quite a big celebration with a festival or it can be quite small and intimate at home, like with your family or even by yourself. Awesome. And so I know that the next um, Sabbath that's coming up is Samhain, which is probably the most popular one, maybe for witches. I'm not sure, but I know people are always talking about it because it happens around Halloween. Well, how do you prepare for Samhain and can you give us some specifics on Samhain? Sure. So yeah, Samhain is a very popular holiday like amongst witches. Um, But personally, I have tried different activities and rituals each year. But a reoccurring theme for me is like obviously the seasonal decorations is a must. So I make sure to use seasonal flowers, pumpkins, decor, but um, also preparing like for a feast as well. We like to incorporate pumpkins that way or even squash. Um, Making bread is another favorite thing of mine, but the biggest one I would say is getting out the family photo albums and setting up a dedicated ancestor altar in our dining room with crystals and other things that sort of resonate with the Sabbath. So like herbs and incense and offering plates for those who have passed on. And that ties in really well with the episode that I did last week on mediumship. So if you wanted to connect with your ancestors a little bit further, there are some tips in that episode to kind of help you do that as well. So Mia, how should a beginner practitioner celebrate Samhain? So in terms of like beginners, I feel it's easy to get like an expectation of what you want the day to be like, but I feel like it can take away from connecting with the Sabbath if you set your expectations a little bit too high. And I think it's 
also important to mention that for broom closet witches, if you can't celebrate the day in the way that you want to, that's okay. And you're still a witch, you're not any less of a witch for that. So in terms of beginners, I would say you can start small. So just like seasonal food, which is just literally available at locals farmers markets, which is nice to support, um, but also making sure like decorating your home, leaving an extra plate as an offering while you're having dinner with your family. Uh, making protection wreaths is a really nice one or like I said making an ancestor altar you can do Samhain oriented spell work you can also do candle magic or using a cauldron but if you're like I say in the broom closet you can do more subtle things such as like wearing seasonal colors journaling about the past year or even just looking through photo albums and getting a bit reflective I love that. And I'm so happy that you included um, tips for someone in the broom closet because I know that is a very common thing where people don't feel like they can practice openly or they're not somewhere where it's safe for them to do so. So that's awesome that you included that. I love those tips. And they're also great tips for anybody. Um, I never actually think about wearing the seasonal colors, but I should definitely do that more often. That feels like the easiest one. (laughs) Yeah, it is really. (laughs) So what are your favorite tools, herbs, or symbols to work with during Samhain? My craft kind of evolves all the time, but some that I tend to come back to, weirdly, I kind of reserve certain tools for Samhain and only use them for that time of year. So for example, with my ancestor altar, I like to use things like obsidian or petrified wood, uh, patchouli incense sticks, or even black or white candles. They tend to be the same things that I revert back to, like that sort of time of year. I don't necessarily use them for spell work as such, but I do like to keep them reserved alongside our photos and offerings out of respect to like those who have passed on. I don't think I use them any time like of the year besides the black candles and such, but having them reserved like just specifically for Samhain, I think makes them so much more special and I suppose a favorite. That's a great idea. I really love that. I love keeping things special so that when you use them, it just has that heightened energy because it has its pure intention of what you want it for. So you mentioned that Samhain is connected with honoring your ancestors. Um, You mentioned some ways that we can honor our ancestors, like keeping a plate open for them or photographs with them. Is there any other ways that we can connect with our ancestors during this time? For those who are new to connecting with ancestors, I would suggest a few different methods, such as thanking them, lighting a candle or incense for them, leaving an offering or other methods I mentioned, like with the ancestor altar, or you can even write a letter. Simplicity is key in starting out, I think. And when I started my journey, I wrote a very, it can be a bit emotional, but writing a letter to someone who has passed on is obviously you connect with them pretty fully, I would say. Um, Obviously, you might want to keep the day a bit more happy and simple reflections like going through photo albums or sharing um, memories with like other family members is very nice to do. But um, I think it's also worth mentioning that like some people may initially feel a disconnect with their ancestors. Like for me, as an example, like I know that a lot of my people in my family tree were likely Christian and they probably wouldn't be accepting of me initially but it's thought that those who pass on they gain a sense of clarity once they've gone over to the other side so if you're a bit concerned about calling upon any sort of spirits or acknowledging those ancestors you can state out loud that if you want to connect with them you can say that you want to connect with positive energies and spirits and deny any negative ones so I think Bottom line, keeping things simple if you're a bit scared is the best way to go. That's amazing. I love that. I really think that, I think simple is great for anybody. I mean, especially because a lot of us don't have like a full day to dedicate to our witchcraft practice. Sadly, like we have jobs, we have other people to take care of, whatever it may be. So having these simple tips and methods are just so important, I think, for the modern witch. And I love the tips that you gave. I think that's Amazing. Perfect. And do you have any favorite myths or stories for Samhain that you'd like to share with listeners? 
Oh, yes. Okay. So I have one favorite in particular. Obviously, it's, it's quite a short one, but obviously it's thought that the veil between the spirit world is at its thinnest. So leaving a candle in your window guides the spirits of loved ones and ancestors to your home. And for me, I find that super magical. But obviously, in like the practicality of things, it's not very safe to leave candles in your window sills all night long. So I do tend to use LED candles for like certain areas that I'm not watching in the house. Um, but obviously if you're able to observe it, then use like a regular candle. But I do feel like the idea of imagining my ancestors visiting upon my house because I've put a guiding light there for them is really, really special. That's beautiful. I love that so much. And I love one thing I have to mention is I actually found you through my TikTok for you page. I saw one of your videos and I was like, this is so cozy and fun. And I went to go follow you and look at your page and I saw that you followed me already. And I was like, ooh, this is awesome. <laughs> so I just love your practice. Like I love what you share. I think I think it's so cozy, but also like very easy for beginner witches to get inspiration and tips. So what prompted you to start your spiritual journey and sharing it on social media so it's a bit of a long-winded one really but um my spiritual journey has been a bit turbulent at times it's hard to sort of pinpoint when i started exploring spirituality because honestly it feels like it's kind of been like a part of my life forever but when i was around like nine or ten someone I don't know why they thought this was a good idea, but they gave me the encyclopedia of 5,000 spells. And <laughs> that's when I started experimenting with spell work. And in hindsight, I was not doing it safely or properly. But anyway, <laughs> growing up, my beliefs were kind of all over the place, ranging from like, I went through a Christianity phase and a law of attraction phase, but it's always come back to spirituality for me and as an adult that's sort of been my guiding light through tough times and I think a lot of people can relate to how comforting it is when nothing else seems to help um, but in like July 2023 I think it was I started posting on TikTok and I had been going through like some serious financial struggles after having to close my business and I kind of needed a hobby to keep me feeling positive um, and I kept posting consistently for a while and even had my first viral video but shortly after that I started having like health issues that lasted for quite a few months and it took a real toll on me mentally and physically and I struggled to sort of keep posting but during that time I would say spirituality really helped me get through it and one thing that I noticed is anytime I wanted to deepen my practice, whether it was buying books or joining a coven or just learning new things in general, was that I just kept running into paywalls and that made me feel pretty excluded, especially when I was already struggling. So that experience is what's inspired me to create my own coven and like provide sort of like educational witchcraft content where people can learn about things without barriers. And I kept sharing and like people just really seem to connect with it. And now my practice is just super sacred to me. And even though energy sort of just ebbs and flows and there are times that I do feel disconnected, I do just always come back to it. And it's really reassuring to have my craft and now a lovely community to lean on when I need it. That is so beautiful. I love that. And I love that your spiritual journey was sort of always with you. I, I can really relate with that. It's like, it's hard to pinpoint an exact moment. It's just sort of always been there, but it's like you said, ebbed and flowed. And I really resonate with the um, paywall to access content and how that is just such an issue. That was actually what prompted me to start sharing free tarot spreads on my website was because I was learning tarot and I was like, well, I don't have money to like pay $500 to join this tarot group. Um, so I just started sharing free stuff and that's how my business started as well. So it's so interesting how I find so many people like it really their their whole like social media or business or whatever it may be really snowballs from them feeling like there's a gap and like they are not able to enter by whatever means. So they kind of do it on their own and that draws in whoever's meant to be drawn in. I love that. Yeah, there, there are quite a lot of like obviously because I have a lot of beginner witches come up to me like 
they always tell me about their situations and there are so many people trying to profit off of people's downfalls and it's really really sad to see but obviously since I've become more a part of the spiritual like community I guess you would call it it's just it's rampant it's really really bad and people are either paying people for what they think they're getting help or some people are really unethical and to me I feel like my aim with my coven and my content is to try and dispel any sort of like misinformation obviously I am still learning but anything that I discover that I think especially beginner witches really need to know I will just share it and I I think the paywalls and like gatekeeping stuff is not it's not like a very good growth mindset and it doesn't provide that sense of community and like the covens that people all want to like put together I don't I don't think it supports that all the time no it's so true and there's like a balance as well like people obviously need to make money and especially when you're putting in so much time and energy to things like you have to charge at for some things but I think not everything has to be behind a paywall and the paywall can also be a reasonable cost not hundreds or thousands of dollars for something that could be you know 35 dollars so I love that yeah definitely a hundred percent and I love your accent can I ask where you grew up (laughs) yeah so that's funny I've got my posh voice on today (laughs) I (laughs) I grew up in the southeast of England in I sort of live near, have you ever heard of like 1066 in the Battle of Hastings? Yes. So I live near, literally right next to Hastings in a town called St. Leonard's, uh, right by the sea. I don't know a lot about 1066. I just say that because I think people know what I'll be talking about. Um, Literally right by the sea. It's, It's really lovely. It's a very small, like we call it a fishing town, but yeah it's it's very close-knit everybody sort of like knows each other and it's really lovely because there's like a growing spiritual community here as well no I love that that's so cool and your content I feel like really reflects that like it's just so cozy like I could definitely just imagine you in like a small little town by the sea like it's so cool (laughs) yeah although it is nice to be by the sea and like although it's nice to be in a close-knit like community I feel like I've been a little bit skeptical on like being public with like being spiritual and stuff and that has been met with like a few closed-minded people and like sometimes there are people who like to be the first spiritual person like in your location they can be a little bit abrasive at times but like majority of the time people like where I am based are really open to like spiritual things I think. Good I love that that's good to hear. So now let's get to the Q&Q segment, question after question, where we ask Mia multiple questions in a somewhat rapid fire style, but I say that and it's never really rapid fire because I always want to know more about what you're saying, so don't worry. (laughs) Are you ready for the Q&Q segment? Yes, I'm ready. So what is your personal favorite Sabbath on the Wheel of the Year? Uh, I'm going to be basic and say Samhain because it is just the best time ever. I think that's like every witch has to say that one. (laughs) It makes sense. Yeah, I have to. (laughs) Which one is your least favorite? Um, I'm going to say Yule probably, but I think that's just because I really dislike winter and being really cold. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I feel like Yule is so cozy though. But yeah, it does have that cold, dark energy. Yeah, I don't like to confront that. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. If you could only use four ritual tools for an entire year, which would you choose? Oh, that's a good question. I'm looking at my altar to try and see what I use the most. Um, Again, I think I'm going to have to be basic and say incense is one of them. I think starting witchcraft, I learned about smoke cleansing and I've just obsessed about it ever since. So incense has got to be up there. White candles, I really love white candles. Um, Citrine is like a really favorite crystal of mine. I think that's because it's to do with like success and abundance. Um, Oh, what's the fourth one? I'm gonna say like, I can't be specific, but I want to say water. Like water is like an element that I work with quite a lot because I like to do bath rituals and things. So I like to use like full moon water or like waterfall water to put in my bath rituals. And I really, really love that. So I think I can't go without those things. 
Ooh, those are good choices. I like it. And also, I think it's so funny that you say citrine, and then you also said that Yule is your least favorite. You're just like summer, sun, warm. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) (laughs) Totally. So which symbol are you seeing repeated these days, if there are any? Like any angel numbers or animals or themes that are coming up a lot for you? I used to see 111 quite a lot, and then I got it tattooed on me, and I haven't seen it ever since. (laughs) But I do... (laughs) It's so silly. Um, I keep seeing a robin, and but we have one that lives in our garden. So I kind of feel like that doesn't really count. So in terms of like reoccurring things, I don't know if it's like the natural, like, I don't know, like pessimist in me or something. I'm like, no, no, that can't, that can't be a sign. That, that's not to do with me. But I would say like, I'm going to have to give you like my most significant sign that I've ever had because I don't have any repeated ones. But I would like when, so I think in February, our family was like going through bereavement. And obviously, like I said, we live by a seaside town. Um, And really randomly, we had like a heron come in our garden, which has never happened before. We live in a very built up area. And we literally just had a heron in our garden, which is probably the only time I've ever believe that a sign was a sign so maybe I think I need to be more open-minded to these sort of things (laughs) well a heron is a very significant sign for sure sometimes they're very obvious and sometimes more subtle I think the robin could be a sign for sure yeah well it's beautiful to hear it singing every day so that's nice (laughs) and can you share some journal prompts that we can use for Samhain yes I can so We've got to be a bit reflective in Samhain people, so just go with the journal prompts. Don't be too rigid with your answers. But, so the first one is, in what ways have I changed since last Samhain? What parts of me have stayed the same? If I could communicate with someone who has passed, what would I say or ask? What messages of wisdom might my ancestors have for me? How do I personally view death? both literal and metaphorical. Ooh, I love those. Thank you so much. And do you have any recommended resources for learning more about Samhain or the Wheel of the Year or witchy things generally? Yes, I do. So I'm more of like a visual learner. So naturally I'm drawn to like YouTube. And I know YouTube can be a little bit of like a funny place in terms of learning information. But I found when I started my witchcraft journey, someone, I think she's called Hearth Witch. She does videos that are just so thorough, but like it's easy to understand information. And she has like with the wheel of the year she has videos on each sabbath and makes like new updated ones with updated information and her videos really helped me understand the sabbaths and essentially fill up my book of shadows with information on the wheel of the year i love her i totally know who you're talking about she does make amazing content and she's always sharing good book recs and tons of good stuff yeah she's amazing i love her content So is there anywhere that our listeners can find you after this episode? Anything you want to plug of your offerings? People can find me on socials with the username Ashen Rose with two E's. And if they like, they can join my free witchcraft coven by clicking the link in my bio, or they can just search Ashen Rose Coven on Facebook and join the group that way. But funnily enough, I do actually have a Discord version of our coven being opened on October 31st. So it would be great for those sort of people who want to stay like fully anonymous so they don't need any like social media or anything. Oh, that's a great idea. I love that. Thank you so much for being here, Mia. It was so great to talk to you. No, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be a guest today. And I really appreciate you inviting me on and providing a safe space for me to talk. A big thank you to our guest, Mia, for teaching us about Samhain, and thank you for listening till the end of this episode. If you want to stay connected with me, you can find me at Emerald Lotus Mystic on Instagram and TikTok, as well as my personal TikTok, Meadow Mystic, where I do free collective charm readings and other witchy things. You can also find my new Instagram, Spiritual Chats Pod, to learn all about this podcast. And I will see you next week.